All right, so we've been talking about well bore stability, but so far we've only considered vertical wells. And as you know, you know, already that uh, in the last 10 or 15 years, but certainly looking into the future, horizontal wells are the future, right? So we have to understand how we can apply these same concepts to what we'll call is arbitrarily deviated wells. Uh, and so these will apply for any sort of angle of deviation from vertical. And of course, if that angle of deviation is 90 degrees, that's horizontal. So in order to analyze these type of problems, we have to do some more of your favorite thing, rotations, okay? And so, and, and this is actually, if you, if you remember, we have our principal stresses We learned how to rotate those into a geographic coordinate frame. So our, our principal stresses could be arbitrarily oriented. I drew this a little bit off. Of course, one of them always, is almost always going to be pointed straight down. And essentially, one of them is always going to be pointed straight down. But in general, they could be arbitrarily oriented, and we have a set of rotations that rotate us back to this geographic frame because it is sort of the frame, right? the fixed frame. And the reason, you know, some of you came to my office when we were talking about slip-on planes and sort of said, well, why can't I just use the geometry? Why do I have to go to this uh, frame? And the, the, the real reason I taught you that way then is because now we, we have to do it now. I mean, there's, there's really no other way because the, our well bores could be arbitrary, arbitrarily oriented anywhere in any direction at any angle from vertical to horizontal and, and, and pointed in any direction, right? Oriented in any direction. So we have to have some reference frame from which we're going to define that arbitrariness in the orientation of the well. And so we have to go to this intermediate frame. Again, we, we, we measure essentially the principal stresses, or those are the easiest to measure or infer, and those can be arbitrarily oriented. We have to then take them into this geographic frame, and that procedure is the same. Nothing's different than when we were looking at slip-on faults and other things. So that, that rotation matrix, that procedure is exactly the same as what it was before. And so now we have a stress tensor in the geographic frame, and we want to take it down into the well bore, okay? And so we're going to define a set of coordinate systems that are referenced from the geographic coordinate system into the well bore, okay? And so that's defined here. We, we have what what is labeled as X or north in that direction, Y or east in that direction, and then and then down, of course, straight down, which is labeled here Z. So X is north, Y is east, Z is down. And then we're going to have a coordinate system that's going to reside in the well bore where what we'll call ZB is the, you know, uh, the line that, that the well bore is centered on. Okay, the center line of the well bore will be ZB, and the angle between down and ZB is theta. Okay, and then we also need to sort of have some um, some angle of deviation from north. Okay, so that you know if we're if we're standing and looking north. And you know the, we're drilling the well that way, then that would be east. We need to rotate, say, 90 degrees, and that the, that angle of rotation is delta. We'll look at these one at a time in a second. But just to so this is 
this is the angle of deviation. So if you were say you had a if this is north and east, then you were drilling a and then you know drilling a horizontal well to the east in this projection that's delta so th this will be your horizontal well right, so the angle between north and the direction the toe is pointing right everybody know the terminology for a horizontal well is that this is the toe and that's the heel right. yeah the azimuth Okay, so let's look at how we actually define these rotation matrices. So if I look, from that figure, if we were to look down from, say, the top of it, we have that this was X, or it was also labeled north. <coughs> this is Y, it was also labeled east. I'm going to label an intermediate coordinate frame that I'm going to call X prime, Y prime, and the angle between them is delta, all right? So X prime, like, to, you know, like you said, X prime is the azimuth of the well, okay, of the deviation of the well. And so what I want to do is I want to write X prime as a function of delta and X and Y. So what is it? What is x prime in terms of x and y and delta? It's just geometry. Right? What, is the, what are the components of x and y that make up x prime? 